So I'm out here working on the Retro Fox today, uh, doing a wide band change, and I'm, I'm testing something here, and we're gonna cover that in just a second. But this threw me for a loop, and I figured, hey, you know what? It possibly could have done somebody else the same. So this is where I have my wide band hooked up at. Let me just go ahead and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So what we're gonna do is unhook this, and when you unhook your wide band, uh, you're going to have to recalibrate if you ever turn the power on, which is what we're going to do now. So we turn our power on, and this is what we're faced with, E2. E2 means a sensor disconnect or a.k.a. bad sensor. So let's say you're ready to go ahead, pop your new sensor in, and calibrate it. This is the reading you're going to get. Here's the trick. This needs to sit like this in E2 mode for at least 30 seconds. I read in there where it said to let it sit for like 30 seconds. I'm thinking... Surely that's not gonna matter, but it did. I'll tell you what, let's do it this way. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's say we're gonna do this wrong. We switch it on, we think we're gonna calibrate. It says E2, we're like, all right, cool. That means we're ready to calibrate, switch it off. So now we go in, we think we're good to go. We're gonna plug our new sensor in and this thing's gonna calibrate. Well, this is what happens. It sits and sits and sits on heater and it never will calibrate. So I thought the sensor was bad because I'm testing something here, guys. I'm testing an F-150 sensor right now in the car. So that's what's down here. Um, but as you see, this thing just will not do anything. It'll just sit here and say heater forever. So I'm not gonna sit here and wait on that. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys the correct way to do this. Trust me, it'll never calibrate. So there again, the way we wanna do this is unhook it. We're ready to do our new sensor install and we turn this on and we literally just wait 30 seconds or more and that will allow this thing to calibrate. It's that simple. So I'm gonna go ahead, do that, and then I'll hook the sensor back up and show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, that should be long enough. Just to make sure though. Because it feels like an eternity sitting here in this hot car. Okay, off. Now all you gotta do is plug your new sensor up. Make sure it's snapped in good. Go ahead, switch the key on. And this takes up to like the first time, uh, 20 to 30 seconds sometimes. I'll show you guys exactly what it is. And make sure your sensor is obviously just in free air down there. It doesn't need to be in the pipe. You're calibrating the sensor at this point. Trust me guys, it will calibrate. There it is. And that's how you calibrate it. It's, it's crazy because I mean, I've done this a million times, but I guess I just, left it on for 30 seconds or more you know every time i've never had this problem before but anyway that's that so let's talk about the sensor that we're going to be using so i have two sensors out of my dad's truck the wide band in this car the sensor uh well i thought was bad it's probably not bad it was probably just that so there's a short sensor and a long sensor i have the long sensor in the car because it just works out better for what i'm doing but i could use this as well so this is our old sensor we got to get it out of here i think it's actually okay um, now we're going to be testing this. I'm not hundred percent sure if it's going to work or not, but here's a secret, uh, for anybody who's wondering this thing gets freaking hot, by the way, twist this thing back about four or five turns before you put it in the pipe. And what that'll do is relieve that tension on it. Whenever you start twisting it. And if you don't think that that heater on that thing gets hot, whoo, I'm here to tell you it does. <sighs> yeah, I should have turned that a little bit more. Okay, all right, well that new one is in place. So let's go ahead now and test everything out and see if it works. And start the car up. Now I will test this out against the computer. Um, 
we'll see how it goes. But uh, this should read fine. I've actually spoken to Matt about it, and he's like, yeah, man, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work. So there's you guys a, a tip here, okay? Uh, like I said, this come out of a 2010 F-150. As you can see over here, we've not even put the uh, computer back up in the car yet. We've just been kind of testing everything, but everything is now ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and button all of this back up, and uh, we'll go drive this thing real quick and check it out. So anytime you're doing any wiring for a wideband or a computer, anything like that, make sure you have a very good connection. This is a uh, uh, add a circuit right under here. It's just a plug, and uh, you plug this in where your fuse normally goes, and you'll be good to go. This will give you all the power that you need for stuff like this, and then just make sure you use a good butt connector or something like that, or solder the wires. Also, your ground is going to be very important, very important. As a matter of fact, I checked the ground on this car just earlier, and uh, I wiggled it, and it actually kind of flickered the gauge a little bit, so I went ahead and tightened that up. So. There's your quick tip. I didn't intend on shooting this video today, but I hope it helps somebody. Just for the record, there are cheaper sensors out there that you can get out of other cars that are for other cars. I think that you can like go to your local AutoZone or Riley or Advance and pick up. I'm not saying that this is the cheapest of the sensors or anything like that. I think these sensors are, are relatively expensive. Um, but here's the thing, you may have some laying around or whatever the case, it's just good to know, right? And also they do keep these in stock at your local auto parts store. so you know 50 bucks for a new sensor that's not too bad rather than having to order it online and wait for it so that's all this is obviously do anything like this at your own risk everything seems to be reading about the exact same as it was before so afr looks dead on as to what it used to be i'll know after we do some testing and we data log the car i'll send the tune to matt and he'll look at it and we'll see what's going on all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up and as always thanks for watching Before we end the video, I'd like to do a quick test uh, with you guys. Since this is a short video, this is a perfect place to go ahead and implement this. I've been working on more of a podcast style setup and I'm gonna test this today. This is just a little snippet from uh, something that I was playing around with anyway. Tell me if you guys like this for you guys that have YouTube Premium, uh, you literally can just listen to this and close out YouTube and listen to it as a podcast. But uh, the idea is basically just things that are on my mind that I want to talk about we'll put it out throw a couple pictures up to look at throughout the whole video keep it simple and just have it to be something that you can listen to obviously the audio quality is going to be a lot better on this so let me know what you think about this I'll go ahead and let it play for a little while and thank you guys for watching so one other thing that I want to say is um, our love for these cars that's what's going to keep you going the passion and the feeling that you get when this thing is running right and the look is second to none. Nothing else is going to give you that. And I think that's what we strive for. That's what's going to keep you going uh, when times get tough. And it's going to happen from time to time. But it's also going to happen with any older car. So I don't want to say just Fox bodies. I do understand times get tough and sometimes you got to you know, gotta get rid of it for whatever reason. But if you can stick it out, I recommend sticking it out with your car. And in the end, when you get it fixed, it'll all be worthwhile. Something else that I want to cover is uh, don't just assume because you put you know a lot of money into one of these cars that you're going to get it out there's there's a chance that that doesn't happen now if you can find a good deal on one sure you know put a little bit of money in it maybe you want to sell it flip it if you will make yourself some money but typically it's just like anything else you're going to put money into it and you're not going to get all that money out although prices are up on fox bodies right now